Recently, I came across a bunch of videos with titles like Why Minecraft has started to become boring or Why Minecraft isn't fun anymore or something along those lines. And even after watching all the ones I can find, I still don't fully understand why. Not because Minecraft is boring, but because it's not. See, Minecraft isn't like the other games. In Call of Duty, you win by killing opponents and competing against other players. There is a single objective and a clear goal. The same with Valorant and other first-person shooters. In games like Black Knight Wukong and Diablo 4, the game mechanics all revolve around a central storyline or theme. But once the final boss is defeated and the entire story is told, well, the game kind of just ends there. For Minecraft though, there is no clear objective or aim, it's an open sandbox. Sure, there is a loose storyline of gearing up and slaying the Ender Dragon, but in my opinion, that's more of an optional side quest. I mean, the Ender Dragon isn't even that difficult to kill. And it can be respawned again and again and again, and killed many times over if you want to generate all of the end gateways. Also, the main reason for slaying the Ender Dragon for most players is that it's the easiest way to obtain the Elytra and Shulker boxes. But guess what? You don't even need to kill the Ender Dragon to get those items in the first place. If you're dog shit at combat, you can build a flying machine and AFK for a little bit, and then you'll naturally reach the Outer End Islands, where you can find an end city, raid it for the Elytra and some Shulker shells, shove them inside an Ender Chest, and then just... Then when you respawn back in the overworld, you can access those items from another ender chest. So if you think about it, the only mob you have to kill in order to obtain the rarest items in the game is just the blaze. And that's only because you can't get the blaze powder from anywhere else. For the ender pearls, however, you can just get that from villagers. On the topic of villagers, some people claim that villagers trading is way too OP and they want the whole thing debuffed because apparently it makes the game way too easy. But the thing is, with the content you see on YouTube made by the top Minecraft creators, most of the grind footage is cut out for retention. So now I get sticks, trade to the full Fletcher, and to this guy, and now we need to level this bar up a bunch. One minute, 37 seconds later. What? Yeah, I can pretty much guarantee that took multiple days of chopping wood and probably a whole forest of trees just to craft enough sticks to trace that point. How do I know? Well, as a test, I set up a new hardcore world on the best seed I can find with literally a village at spawn. And after building out a villager breeder, which took like multiple days, waiting for them to breed, which took another few days because for some reason, the farmer wouldn't share his fucking potatoes. But even after baby villagers started popping out and I've built myself a string duper just to speed up the trading process even more, I'm still here grinding grinding for a diamond pickaxe after like six hours of gameplay. To be fair, I did die halfway through and had to start over again, but th th that's beside the point. No, the real reason why it took so long is because Mojang literally put caps on how many trades villagers can make per day. So even though trading feels easier than mining for resources, both methods take roughly the same amount of time to get to full diamond. Now, switching back to the Ender Dragon, another complaint I've heard some people mentioning is that the game becomes too boring after you defeat the boss and you lose Use the motivation to keep building and exploring. But again, the problem is never with the dragon. The issue is that people view the dragon as being the final stage of the game, when in fact, it's only just the beginning. See, one of the largest limitations in the early game is speed. With the size of Minecraft being an expanse of 60 million blocks, there are so many things out there to explore. But with just the player's feeble legs, the majority of this landmass is completely unreachable. But once the players enter the late game by obtaining the Elytra, everything changes. Now, by air, they can traverse entire oceans in mere seconds. And with shulker boxes and ender chests, you can pretty much carry around an entire base of materials with you in your inventory. In fact, if every single one of those shulker boxes were filled to the brim with full stacks of items just like this, the total would be over 100,000 blocks. To give you a sense of how big that number is, if that many of you guys click the button underneath this video that begins with sub and ends in scribe, I'd literally be able to show you one of these in the next video. Also, I'd probably win this week's lottery as well. Anyways, one of the greatest benefits of shulker boxes is that it unlocks the ability for players to build giant massive mega builds without needing to spend a bunch of time going back and forth moving resources around. This is why in the recent years, the Minecraft community has evolved into building larger and larger projects, constantly pushing the game to its absolute limits. And oh, by the way, if you think these builds are insane, we're barely even getting started. While most people still struggle to understand how a comparator works, some players have taken redstone engineering to astronomical levels, using state-of-the-art redstone technology such as the instant wire developed by Kaizen, which allows a normally slow
offload redstone signals to propagate hundreds of blocks in a single game tick, and utilizing music disks for data storage, the creator going by Mr. Kowalski managed to create a 16 kilobyte RAM module, the largest RAM ever created in the history of Minecraft. It is so large, in fact, that it surpasses the size of the RAM module used in Assassin 5 Rocket that sent man to the moon. But why stop at RAM when you can build an entire computer? Or how about a computer that can play Minecraft inside of Minecraft? Well, what you're seeing right now is exactly that. This redstone computer was built by Sami Yuri and two other incredibly talented and skilled players over the course of multiple months. In fact, the CPU itself took over seven months alone just to complete. Despite only having eight kilobytes of RAM and a primitive graphics processor, it is crazy how all of this actually renders a full 3D scene. Now, if you've ever played on any survival multiplayer servers as a kid, the name 2B2T may sound vaguely familiar. That's because it's one of the oldest anarchy servers still running to this day. On this server, almost anything is allowed, including the use of hack clients. Bases would be griefed as soon as the coordinates were known. And unless you build only out of obsidian, nothing lasts forever on this server. Despite that, it hasn't deterred any players from trying, and many insane bases were built throughout this server's long history. One prominent player, Crowbar, single-handedly created some of the most mind-blowing creations across the entire server, with builds like Entopia, Whitehaven, and the Five Isles. But this next build completely one-ups every other build we've seen yet, as it is a one-to-one -one recreation of our entire Earth. Set to take many more years and millions of more blocks, this project is so incredibly challenging that the maintainers themselves even claim that this might not even be possible to finish. Now, given all the possibilities that Minecraft provides us, and seeing just how far players can take the game, I think it's pretty safe to say that, despite the imperfections, Minecraft is likely the best game that has ever been developed.